Concerns are growing in Europe about the safety around Ukraine's Zaporizhia nuclear plant after an attack over the weekend sparked fears of possible radiation leaks. Ukraine's largest nuclear power operator is issuing calls for the plant to be converted into a non-militarized zone, backed by a team of peacekeepers. The Kremlin has accused Kyiv of this attack, warning Europe of catastrophic consequences. Despite the concerns, Russia's Interfax news agency reports the plant is operating normally. Kyiv and Moscow are trading blame. The weekend assault on Europe's largest nuclear facility was the second back-to-back -back hit on the site. UN Chief Antonio Guterres has called for international spectators to be given access to the Russian-controlled plant. Any attack to a nuclear plant is a suicidal thing, and I hope that uh, those attacks uh, will end. And at the same time, I hope that uh, the IAEA will be able uh, to uh, have access uh, to the plant and uh, to exercise uh, its mandate competencies. And let's get the latest from Berlin, where Trent Murray joins us live. Uh, Trent. The International Atomic Energy Agency warning of the risk of nuclear disaster. Has it updated? Is there any more updates from that world body? Yeah, absolutely right. So in Vienna in the past few minutes, we've just uh, had a press conference from the Ukrainian ambassador to the IEA, uh, Juhenji Zimbaljik, and he basically gave a rundown of exactly what has occurred, according to Kyiv, and also warned of an incredibly dangerous moment. He said those rockets struck that nuclear power plant over the weekend, as you mentioned, and he is now calling uh, for an urgent international mission uh, to go into that power plant of international observers and experts and effectively try to get a reading of the situation and make sure there are no more rocket attacks. He said it is impossible to predict uh, what the Russians may do next. Of course, they have occupied this plant since the beginning of March when they first launched their invasion. Ukrainian staff are still on site. Are they, according to Kyiv, are being forced to work? But those rockets are struck not only an administration building, but also a storage building holding 174 containers of used nuclear fuel. And that is what has really uh, alarmed many experts in Europe because what they will tell you is that in a nuclear power plant, certainly the reactor is generally very well protected with almost a concrete sarcophagus, if you will, very difficult to penetrate. But if a rocket is to strike a building with old uranium and nuclear fuel in it, those buildings are not as strong. And so there really is the risk uh, that the building could be penetrated by a rocket, explode, and then we have a radioactive leak. So obviously a very tense and delicate moment right now. The Ukraine Ukrainians are saying the Russians are using this nuclear site as a bit of a military fortress to launch attacks on Ukraine, knowing that it's difficult for Ukraine to respond given it's a power plant and, and the risk of, of, of a disaster. As you say, Energetom, the, uh, the uh, Ukrainian energy firm that manages the country's fleet of nuclear reactors, is today calling for that zone to be demilitarised, warning of a Chernobyl-style disaster if one of these rockets hits the wrong spot. I'm trying to growing calls for the plant to fall under some sort of international monitoring and protection scheme. We just heard the UN chief is calling for access for the IAEA. Is Russia likely to oblige, if not for the sake of Ukraine, then at least for its own? I, 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 th I think this is a really difficult uh, diplomatic question because in many ways the Russians are trying very hard to hold on to that foothold that they have got in southern Ukraine and so they'll be very reticent to want to give up any territory even to an international neutral uh, observation force. Uh, but of course, as you say, there is this risk of, of something going wrong. We understand that there are Russian experts on site at that nuclear power plant kind of supervising the work of the Ukrainian staff that are being uh, forced to work there against their will, according to Kyiv. Uh, and then there has also been this discussion in this press conference in the last hour or so uh, that perhaps we're seeing a new technique or a new strategy here by the Russians to try and shell some of the high voltage power lines that connect to that plant in order to cut off electricity to parts of Ukraine that aren't under Russian control. So obviously there's a lot at stake here. Is Are the Russians using this 
this plan as part of a new strategy to try and put more pressure on their Ukrainian opposition. It's it's very difficult to say, but of course, while all of that is taking place, we know that the ramifications of any sort of nuclear disaster could be very, very widespread and ripple well beyond the region. And so that is why I think you are seeing this call for the UN to get in there as quickly as possible. But of course, whether the Russians allow that to happen, we will just have to wait and see. Oh, thanks. The, the, the very latest there from Trent Murray speaking to us from Berlin. Waiting for international mission to power plant, probably the, led by the IAEA Ukraine. Well, two more ships carrying grain sailed out of Ukraine's Black Sea ports today. And this brings the total to 12 since the first vessel left just a week ago. Now, a ship carrying 12,000 tons of corn arrived at a Turkish port today, three days after leaving Ukraine. It's part of a deal that was brokered by the United Nations and Turkey to help ease a global food shortage. Now, before Moscow's invasion, Russia and Ukraine together accounted for nearly a third of global wheat exports. Ukraine hopes to export 20 million tons of grain in its silos and 40 million from its new harvest to help rebuild its economy. On the ground, Russian forces are still trying to gain full control of the eastern Donbass region. The governor of Luhansk region suggested over the weekend that Russia is preparing for a new referendum in newly captured areas and is offering residents benefits for taking part. But President Volodymyr Zelensky warns that if Russia proceeded with the referendums, talks with Ukraine or its international allies would be off the table.